Recently, I had a spine operation, so with your permission, I'll... sincerely extend my thanks to the organizers of this conference, particularly to Marius, for the kind invitation and for giving me this unique opportunity to take part to this really stimulating gathering. Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, the Mediterranean region has traditionally been regarded as a highly fragmented region, harboring deep-rooted tensions and potential instability. Since the crumbling of the Berlin Wall in 1989 and the collapse of the Soviet bloc, the West has in several ways enlarged its influence. With the gradual inclusion of several countries, both in the EU and NATO, the boundaries of the West move eastward and southward. The Eastern Mediterranean is already the West's new outer limit. This region contains a variety of political entities, including Western-type democ democracies, authoritarian regimes, rich oil producer states, and some of the poorest countries in the world. Such gaps and inequalities in wealth and prosperity increase international tensions and provide severe challenges to regional peace, stability, and security. Economic underdevelopment, poverty, illiteracy, and political instability encourage illegal immigration and the export of terrorism and fundamentalism. As such, the preoccupation of the EU and NATO with Mediterranean security is not new, even though it was never a central focus of attention. High expectations for regional security and cooperation in the post-Cold War environment were not met, whereas the end of the Cold War boosted a sense of security in Central Europe the collapse of communism had a very different impact on Southeast Mediterranean. The deterioration of Arab-Israeli relations and the deadlock in the peace talks with Palestinians, along with the Lebanon conflict, boosted Arab frustration and generated new feelings of mistrust and suspicion. Furthermore, the post-9-11 international environment downgraded the prospects of EU and NATO initiatives. After many years of a more intensive cooperation between the European Union and the Mediterranean, the overall picture is one of stagnation. The Barcelona process initiated, initiated by the Spanish presidency in 1995 was designed to change the dynamics in the relationships between the EU and the Southern Mediterranean. The so-called Euro-Mediterranean partnership was intended to create a huge space which would, in long-term perspective, uh, develop into a sound market economy based on the principles laid out by the European Union. However, one of the major problems of this cooperation was the fact that most of the southern Mediterranean countries, if not all, apart from Israel, could not be considered considered as working democracies. They could, be, they could be called as illiberal democracies, as Farid Zakaria quite rightly described them, semi-democracies, patrimonial democracies, or even pseudo-democracies, but they did not comply with the most important values set out in the treaties of the European Union. In spite of the use of democratic conditionality in bilateral agreements, the reality was that the EU closed its eyes in order to facilitate the relationship which was developing in a relatively smooth way on the economic and trade level. A second major problem was the fact that the southern Mediterranean countries did not feel treated at equal level with the European counterparts particularly after 9-11. This reality was clearly demonstrated during the celebration meeting of the 10th anniversary of the Euro-Mediterranean Partnership in Barcelona in November 2005. Indeed, this fact 
is very important because the main issue on the agenda were security interests of the West, particularly the fight against terrorism. The main purpose of the meeting, instead of celebration, was to streamline efforts by the South and Mediterranean countries in the fight against terrorism. The consequence was that high-ranking officials of the Arab countries decided not to attend. A third major issue is also the uneven level of development between the EU and all the South and Mediterranean countries. This does not mean only in terms of statistics, but also of economic mentality and political culture. The lack of democratic accountability and transparency clearly further undermine the conditions for a thriving market economy. This is linked to the first major issue, democracy and democratization. Democracy is not just elections. It is a highly complex transition to a new system of rules based on transparency and, uh, and accountability of the ruling elected elite to the citizens. The role of education towards citizenry cannot be achieved overnight. It is a work of generations. The Arab, the Arab Spring movement that is still ongoing and may last over several, several years shows that the EU clearly made the mistake to trade off the original ambitions of the Euro-Mediterranean partnership for political and economic stability in most southern Mediterranean countries. The lack of answers to the Arab Spring movement soon after it broke out showed the incapacity of the EU to play a constructive, dynamic, and reliable role in its own backyard. The lack of flexibility in dealing with a new situation shows the shortcomings in the construction of the foreign and security policy institutions within the European Union. European leaders were caught completely unaware by the spectacular unfolding of history in Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, and Syria because over the past years, their main focus has been elsewhere. Baroness Catherine Ashton was not able to show leadership in a unique opportunity for the European Union and the West. The whole discourse of the European Union in the world is about democracy and human rights. However, in the very crucial moment, the approach towards support of democratic movements was slow and at least in the beginning quite ineffective. These dramatic events illustrate once again the importance of the new European Treaty, which for the first time correctly created tools for the EU to develop a coherent and effective foreign and security policy. The process of democratic transition has never been easy, yet it seems to be the most viable option and the best means to achieve lasting peace and security. Dismantling the structures of the four former regimes, introducing the basic elements of a democratic and pluralistic society, and establishing new and open institutions require determination and competence. To this end, the West solidarity, and particularly that of the EU, in assisting civil societies and the newly established authorities is crucial, but should not be accomplished through the imposition of models. It should rather be achieved through consultation and the respect of the people's sovereign choices. We should always bear in mind the mistakes we have committed in the past and try not to repeat them in the future. The West's long-term strategic interests lie in strengthening Western-oriented states in the Eastern Mediterranean whose policies have a potential to pacify this zone of turmoil. Jordan and Lebanon, for example, are two Arab countries that could, in effect, join our efforts. Stimulating the economy, creating jobs and a network of social welfare is equally important. In the absence of concrete economic improvement, support for democratic reform may quickly vanish and give way to feelings of frustration and disappointment. Strengthening internal security and the rule of law 
in this transition phase should also constitute a major priority. Taking steps to curb corruption and nepotism and investigating abuses of power committed by the former ruling elite can provide additional impetus to the reform process. The younger generation must be given the means and should be encouraged to be actively involved in public life and political action, and in this way to give effect to its wish to be a driving force for change, for democratic reconciliation, for cooperation, for stability and security. My own political party and our youth branch have launched a major campaign and are providing useful networking and political training to young leaders from the region, from countries like Libya, Jordan, Lebanon, and Egypt, and Israel, in close cooperation with the European People's Party, which is the umbrella organization for Christian, democratic, and like-minded parties in Europe. Furthermore, my party hosts the Middle East Observatory of the EPP, which is a platform of political dialogue on democracy, market economy, and human rights, aiming to bring together like-minded leaders from our neighboring countries. Shortly before the Arab Spring, the European Union concentrated its efforts in reshaping Euro-Mediterranean partnership through the launching of a new pro project. The project of French President Nicolas Sarkozy of a Union for the Mediterranean, which despite of the ambitious goals set, unfortunately failed to produce any concrete results. Between 2008 and 2011, the Union for the Mediterranean was not active at all. However, broader geopolitical developments, like the ones which are currently taking place in the region, would eventually maintain an increasing shift of EU-NATO attention towards the South and the East. It could be easily argued that at the core of the security problem in our broader region lies a set of fundamental domestic factors in the southern so shores of the Mediterranean. These factors relate to the undemocratic political organization of the states, the lack of respect for fundamental freedoms and basic human rights, and the set of socioeconomic factors, including high unemployment, inequality in income distribution, corruption, and lack of transparency and accountability. It is these factors which provided the breeding ground for Islamic fundamentalism and also for illegal immigration across the Mediterranean. Without a wider democratic reform in the Middle East and North Africa, addressing these core problems, and without a permanent and viable solution to the Palestinian problem, the prospects for a solid and long-lasting security would be limited and fragile. Since such a wider reform was considered as a very elusive and long-term prospect, the pursuit of short-term stability appeared as a more feasible option. Thus, the cooperation with regimes like the Mubarak regime in Egypt, the Ben Ali regime in Tunisia, and even the Gaddafi re regime in Libya appeared as a more tangible and pragmatic goal for the West. A critical approach would actually regard this engagement with authoritarian regimes as detrimental to long-term security. The Arab Spring has violently put an end to this illusion or dilemma. The impetus for change and reform has finally come from within as a pressing public de demand. It is, however, an ambivalent change. Among the countries of the Eastern Mediterranean, however, four of them stand out. Greece, Cyprus, Turkey, and Israel. Democratic and relatively prosperous, despite of the negative effects of the prevailing international economic and fiscal crisis, they all have adopted a pro-West foreign policy and are linked to European institutions such as the EU and NATO. Greece and Cyprus have denounced and abandoned, fortunately, old-fashioned policies of the early 80s that led to third world 
oriented and non-aligned oriented foreign policy 